Hi right, gang, STAT 1150. Uh, the purpose of this video is to uh, dive into a few problems on uh, my STAT lab and um, uh, show you how these uh, correlation regression techniques uh, will apply to the questions that uh, uh, you work for your homework assignments and your exams. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Let's go to question one and see what's up. Um, so apparently uh, using weights and highway fuel consumption amounts uh, for the accompanying data. So let's see what's going on with that. So uh, we have our predictor, uh, independent variable, explanatory variable uh, is weight. And then we have our dependent variable or the response variable, uh, fuel consumption. All right, cool. And uh, they've already given us the model, and it uh, looks like we have uh, four parts, A through D, that they want us to answer. So uh, I have no idea why this has already clicked. Um, so what does the symbol Y hat represent? Well, it represents the predicted. Uh, so clearly that's wrong. So the default, that's, that's interesting. I've never seen that happen before. Uh, so y hat would represent the predicted value of our y, which in this case would be the highway fuel consumption. Uh, what are the specific values of the slope and the intercept? So remember, the slope is the value that goes with the x. So the slope is going to be negative uh, 0 0.00749, and the intercept is the other number, the number without the x. So these are in, uh, pretty pretty straightforward as long as you don't make you know a, kind of a just accidental click of an incorrect uh, these should be pretty straightforward. Uh, what is the predictor variable? Well, the predictor variable is our x, which in this case is um, uh, the weights. So it's the predictor variable is weight, which is represented by x. Remember. Uh, the y is the uh, response variable or what we are actually predicting, right? And uh, assuming that there is a significant linear correlation between weight and highway fuel consumption, what is the best predicted value? Well, I'm just going to grab my calculator here and I'm going to plug in. Uh, so I'm going to take 58.9 minus, and I'm going to put this in parentheses, so I'm going to put 0 0.00749, and I'm going to multiply that by the 2987. Um, so I get 36.52, this is round to one decimal place, so 36.5 uh, looks like uh, it should be the correct answer. All right, uh, what's the difference between the uh, two regression models, uh, equations? Well, uh, remember, if we have the betas, this is the population model. And if we have the Bs, this is the model that we're using to predict. This is the model that we created from our sample. So the first equation is for sample data. The second equation is for population. Uh, that one's pretty easy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, usually when that pops up, it, it means we've done something wrong. I'm like, uh, no, that's not wrong. Uh, OK, question three. Uh, what is the relationship between the linear correlation coefficient all right, this is a good question. Uh, so if you get a correlation coefficient r, which is like a negative 0.5, what does that tell you? It says we have a negative relationship. Well, what's the relationship with b? Well, b1 is the slope of the model. So if we have a negative relationship between x and y, it would be really, really, really goofy statistics if we fit a model with a positive slope. Now I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to, uh, hold on just a second. I'm going to kind of uh, ad lib a little bit here and uh, pop out. Um, I want to make uh, a point that this is clear because this is an important uh, thing to think about. 
should have been better prepared, but uh, you know what, stuff happens. So let's go to uh, the presenter. And let me explain uh, what I mean by this. So, uh, you know, we uh, look at a relationship for some points. And let's say we have something like that, right? Clearly, the relationship between X and Y is positive. So I know that my R value would be greater than zero. Well, let's think about the line of best fit. It would be really goofy statistics if our line of best fit had a negative slope. So when R is greater than zero, I can be guaranteed that my B1 will be greater, greater than zero. Again, this is a line of best fit, not a line of worst fit. And the same thing goes with uh, a negative relationship. Let's just put in some points here that are clearly uh, declining in value as X gets larger. Clearly here, the R value would be negative. It'd be less than zero. Again, it would be really goofy statistics if we uh, created the line of best fit uh, that had a slope other than the direction. So this is no, this one is good. So I uh, think that uh, was worth uh, taking a look at. So the value of R will always be smaller. That has nothing to do with it. The value of R will always have the same sign as the value of B, absolutely. All right, now we're going to get into the nuts and bolts of actually taking a data set and making some calculations. So what is the regression equation? There are all kinds of fancy calculations, uh, formulas, et cetera, that you can use to find uh, the regression model. Uh, I don't think I would do that. I would. Uh, pop the data into StatCrunch. Maybe. Well, this is fun. All right. So uh, first of all, we have to determine which is X and which is Y. Uh, so it says that uh, we will let chest size be the X. Now, uh, tattoo this one to the brain, point of interest. Uh, a lot of times we assume that the variable that comes first in the table is our X and the other one has to be the Y. That's usually the case. But when your grade is at stake, pump the brakes and go through and make sure that you, um, uh, you have this correctly. So right there, let chest size be the X tells me that indeed the first is the X. So that tells me when I go to stat, I come down to regression and I go over to simple linear regression. Then when it comes time to choose my X variable, I know which one it is. The other one, of course, has to be the Y. Again, this stuff right through here doesn't matter right now because um, we don't um, we, we aren't yet into the inference part of regression. That will come in lesson seven. So <clears throat> when I get to the uh, point, uh, the, the output, I can see that the answer is this. So this is going to be y hat equals negative 313.92 plus 15 point, uh, let's just write out 788 uh, times our x. So we'll go back to where we enter our uh, numbers, uh, so it says round to one decimal place, so negative 313.9, and our slope is 15.8. Uh, what is the best predicted weight of a bear with chest size 58? Well, <clears throat> what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to put 58 into our model. So I have negative uh, 313.9 uh, plus uh, uh, 58 times our slope, which is 
and I get 602.5. This is round to one decimal place, so 602.5 should be. All right. Um, and uh, let me let me just show you this since I've got this up. Uh, this this is the way I put this in my calculator. I'm really it's really important that we have order of operations defined. So that's why I put the uh, the the uh, operation where I multiply the uh, uh, what was it? I guess here I multiplied the value times the slope, right? And then the intercept. So uh, I'm super careful that I don't uh, make an error with uh, order of operations. Is the result close to the actual weight of the 642 uh, of 642? So apparently we have a bear up here that has a weight of uh, uh, actual weight of 642. Oh, okay. Well, apparently there's a bear that is not included in our study, and we have predicted, uh, we've actually seen, observed that this bear weighs 642, while our model predicts, because there's not a 58 up here. So this 58 has to be, you know, another bear that we brought into the scene, and we're making a prediction uh, on their weight. So it looks like that this is a, a fatter bear. Uh, than what we would have predicted. So I say the weight is not very close to the actual weight because it's about uh, uh, about 40 pounds off. That's that's quite a bit, I would think. And I'm no bear expert, but I think that would be quite a bit. Uh, no, I don't think it's close. All right, gang, that's it. Uh, I uh, hope this helped. Now, let me pump the brakes and circle back to something that's very important. Um, when we get up here and we read the entire problem, uh, then find the predicted weight. Okay, good. Is the close uh, result close to? That's fine. Right out here, it says use a significance level of 0.05. Now, for right now, what I want you to do is completely ignore that statement. That significance level has to do with hypothesis testing, which we get into uh, again, and and ad nauseum, I'm uh, here repeating uh, lesson number seven. So when you see things like that that don't apply to what I've taught you in the instructional videos, for now, uh, just delete that. And it's not going to be a lot. I mean, for, specific to this problem, everything here is relevant information except for that part right there. All right, gang, uh, that's all I got. Take care.